Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, a very special episode indeed. Uh, the first smartwatch ever to be reviewed on the channel, so quite a momentous occasion. Now, of course, before I get into this video, I have to do a wristwatch check, and I am indeed wearing my wife's little Cartier, the Cartier tank, an absolute icon. While she's out, of course, I'm enjoying the little Carti. So, wristwatch check done. Without further ado, uh, let's roll the intro and get into today's video. Today we are finally taking a look at a smartwatch. Yes, I know, it's a first for the channel, it's something a little bit different, but I thought, you know, we should cover all aspects of horology. Today we're looking at the Garmin Kronos. Uh, this is from the Phoenix line. Now, Garmin is actually an American multinational technology company uh, based in Kansas and with uh, headquarters also in Switzerland. They started in the late 80s and they specialize in GPS technology, specifically for automotive, aviation, marine, and of course, outdoor and sporting activities uh, such as the wearable technology that we're looking at today. Now this is the latest uh, release from Garmin and the first thing you'll, you'll notice is that it's very much inspired by sports watches. Uh, this comes in three varieties. There's two stainless steel, one on bracelet and one on uh, a rather fancy Italian leather strap. This is the titanium version and it comes on a bracelet as well. Uh, and I must point out it also is presented beautifully in a wooden box. So in the box you will find instructions, you'll also find a USB cable to recharge the piece and of course an extra rubber uh, strap which I've, I've fitted on. It's very easy to uh, take off and on. You can see on the bracelet it has little uh, bolt action spring bars for um, it actually it's really remarkably easy to take off and on. Now the bracelet is also brushed titanium the same as the case and is linked together by rubber. It's quite fluid it is actually quite comfortable, however, because I was using this particularly for working out, I just prefer a rubber strap because, you know, I, I, you, you sweat a lot. Not that this can't handle it, but it's just I found it more comfortable on rubber straps. I, I tend to wear a G-Shock when I work out. The bracelet comes with a double push-button deployant uh, that um, is very securely fastened. Uh, very nicely machined, I must admit. So let's have a look at the watch itself. Now we'll get the dimensions out of the way first. So diameter, we're looking at a staggering 49 millimeters, which is absolutely massive. Probably the largest watch I've ever reviewed. We have a height, and you can just see the, uh, this is actually the optical sensor for the heart rate. Uh, the thickness is 15. Lug to lug, we're looking at 56, well, just under 57. Lug width uh, is 22, which is great because that, you can even put it on a NATO, <laughs> which of course is what I'm probably gonna do if I own something like this. So as I said, the case is entirely uh, brushed titanium which makes it light and in fact actually on the bracelet it's about 112 grams without the bracelet we're looking at 78 so remarkably light considering its size the steel ones are heavier uh, the steel one on leather I think is 94 grams and the steel with a steel bracelet is 186 grams so this watch is absolutely jam-packed full of gadgets and gizmos First of all, we'll just have a scroll through. You can get all kinds of information. You, it will show your heart rate in a variety of different graphs. You can um, plot and show your data, uh, which is really, really cool. We have five buttons for navigation. Uh, the red here is basically stop and start, and then they're indicated on the inner part of the bezel. On the outside of the part of the bezel, we do have a tetrametric scale, a uh, tachometer, uh, which is, you know, it, does remind me of the Omega X33 uh, Speedmasters. Of course, we have an altimeter, a barometer, and as you can see, a compass. So really designed 
uh, for the outdoors. And I must admit the display is very well lit. It's designed specifically to be read in sunlight. And I'm in an extremely well lit room here. So it just goes to show you how well it works. The actual glass is sapphire as well. Uh, so they've really boosted its robustness and it has a water depth rating of 100 meters. If we hold down the stop and start, we immediately go to a um, stopwatch or chronograph with minutes and hours there. And as you might have heard, it does actually vibrate. It will give you notifications. Of course, we just reset there. And I love the way that it actually got sweeping seconds. Very, very nice indeed. So if we just use this button to go back, and then we scroll through some more of the features. Now, this is a really cool display. This will actually tell you and give you kind of different graphical representation of steps, um, how much energy you're burning, all, all kinds of different um, statistics. Now, if we hold down the center button here, we go to the main uh, menu here, which we can scroll through and you can change a lot of things. And my, one of my favorite things uh, has got to be, and I'm a sucker for aesthetics, but has got to be the um, different watch faces you can have. You can even change the hands, uh, but I'll show you a variety of different clock phases. And the, the most hilarious one is this Bauhaus. It's almost like a Nomos. Uh, it's quite funny. The buttons are very, very solid feeling and responsive, and I think it works extremely well. And then, of course, you'll notice on the back, if we see there, the apart from the big sensor here, you'll see this little indentation there. And included in the kit is this cable that just clips on very easily and you plug this into the computer, you can recharge the watch. The battery is extremely impressive, and this is one thing that kind of bugged me about the previous Garmin watches I've owned, is the, the battery just uh, used to deplete so, so quick. Inside, it actually has a 180 milliamp uh, lithium iron battery, and it can go for about uh, 25 hours on what is called ultra trek mode so it will uh, automatically kind of dim the screen uh, try and save power and then when using the gps because this obviously has what's called glonass uh, navigation inside of it it will run a little bit less we're looking at about 13 hours the main use of this watch and if we just scroll through is of course outdoors and sports activities and it has all different profiles all set up ready uh, from skiing climbing hiking all different types of running I've actually used it for indoor biking and indoor running as well. And I've got to say, the, the information, the readout, it tracks everything, your step count, uh, everything actually the gym equipment was doing, but <laughs> to a more accurate extent. So just to give you an example, if we were doing an indoor run, we'd select indoor run, we'd start, then it will tell you oh, all the different information using graphical representation. Then you can do lap times and all the rest of it. So here we are having a look at the altimeter. It can show you information with graphs. The watch can also stay connected through what's called smart notifications. Uh, so it will uh, let you receive emails, text, uh, alerts from your phone. Uh, onto the watch. It is compatible with most smartphones and lets you get messages and displays text on its screen. The advanced uh, fitness matrix that the watch is packed with is very sophisticated. Uh, it can really monitor your form and fitness, including running speed, beats per minute, heart rate variability. It can estimate the maximum number of oxygen you can consume per minute, tracks changes, vertical oscillation ratio there, ground contact and balance, uh, even your cadence and stride length. It can um, determine all of these things, which is very, very impressive. And also you can log this information in. This is not a conventional, you know, movement uh, like a Quartz or a G-Shock. It's essentially a little computer on your wrist. So you can store that. I think there's about 32 megabytes of memory in the watch itself. And just looking over the watch uh, before we take it back to the studio, you can see, you know, a little sign buckled there. A lot of attention to detail. This is very nicely made and extremely robust feeling. So let's quickly get a wrist shot. Okay, so there we go. And as you can see, it's massive, very, very big. It's a real shame that it's so big. There's a lot of overhang there. 
Uh, the lungs don't curve whatsoever. It sits very, very flat. It's actually not that tall. However, it's just far too big, especially for me. If you're skinny or wrist, this is, this is not going to be for you. So anyway, let's take it back to studio and summarize the watch. Let's go through the positives and negatives. We'll start with the good things first. Uh, first of all, undoubtedly, Smartwatches, whether we like it or not, are part of the horological future of wristwatches. There's, there's no denying that. I think this is actually a very well-made, put-together piece that has been uh, carefully considered, uh, especially when it comes to its design and function. This is probably the most useful aspect or, or potential use for smartwatches. The setup is very intuitive, uh, it's easy to use, uh, especially for something quite complicated. It has an excellent battery life, uh, which is something that has been lacking in a lot of smartwatches, well, at least the smartwatches I've seen and the earlier uh, generations of the Phoenix watch that I actually had uh, some experience with before I had a channel. And lastly, it's function. Uh, it's extremely accurate. I found it really, um, definitely more accurate than my, the machines I use. At the core of it, what it was designed to do, it does impeccably well. There's no denying that. So when it comes to actually performance, getting the job done, it's an extremely useful tool. Also, I really got to give uh, credit to its screen. Something I've noticed about other smartwatches is in high level light, uh, it's very often difficult to read the screen. The screen was bright, responsive, clear, and you know, extremely legible. And that is important, especially when you're working out, you're sweating, you know, uh, you've got to be able to read those, uh, that data easily and quickly. And I also like the customizable uh, little features, you know, the different clock faces. That is something I, I think uh, adds a nice touch especially to you know traditional watch fans it would have been nice to see a sweeping uh, second hand a kind of little ode to automatic timepieces uh, but you know that's a very minor thing at least they got it in the stopwatch okay so let's look at the negatives well first of all uh, you know i'm going to say this it's dramatically oversized it hangs over my wrists it's a real shame because had this been 40 or even 42 millimeters in diameter it would have been incredible. I would probably buy one myself. Now, the good thing is it's not that tall, uh, but I understand, you know, you've got to fit a lot of technology, the sensors, it's kind of excusable. However, I do think uh, at the size it is, it just is too big for, for a lot of wrists out there. I think it's a real shame because it was clumsy to wear. Okay, the second negative has got to be the price. I think it is asking quite a lot. Uh, there's no doubt that the quality and what you get for the money is there. However, you know, especially the one I looked at, which was about $1,500, it's, it's rather a, a lot to ask for something that essentially is going to be outdated in a few years. You know, that's one advantage or major advantage a beautiful mechanical timepiece has is that, you know, you can hand it down the generations. This feels more like an expensive toy. Actually, I won't say toy. I think that's a little bit harsh. Uh, it's an expensive gadget. And I think paying $1,500 for essentially something that is going to be replaced a few years down the line is, um, is a difficult one. But really, apart from its high price tag and its oversized scale, there aren't really that many negatives. I think it's a generally a, a well-designed, well-made piece that really does the job. There's a small inner child that, that yearns for that kind of Dick Tracy watch. Uh, a slight puerile obsession. You, you guys know I've, I've always loved ABC and outdoor watches like the, the Casio Pro Trek, for example. But they certainly have their work cut out, especially if they're going to try and uh, capture the hearts and minds of traditional watch enthusiasts. What is interesting about this watch also is that Garmin are trying to make something uh, that is less of a tool and also can be worn casually as well. Um, I think its size definitely undermines that. I just wish it was a bit smaller and not so expensive and I would actually consider one. Now unfortunately I have to send this back. I'm going back to my trusty G-Shock and I've got to say, uh, working out today, I did miss having all that information. Thank you very much for Garmin 
uh, to sending this out for me and very kindly sponsoring this review. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, opinions, questions, all the rest of it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback, especially about smartwatches. What would you like to see in a smartwatch? Especially nominations of any I should uh, check out and review for the channel. I greatly appreciate your feedback, especially on this subject, which I think you know is undoubtedly gonna be important to the future of wristwatches. Uh, so thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. It really does help me. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.